Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing stock market wrap for Tuesday, July 23rd, 2019. Uh, yesterday, I skipped the um, uh, update on the public YouTube channel uh, because I wanted to do a more uh, comprehensive update. Again, we're in the summer doldrums for the stock market, so as I mentioned, I did start that video for members with the, a brief overview on the market and then rolled into a lot of other things that we're watching and trading, commodities, and, uh, precious metals, things like that. Uh, but I also stated yesterday that absolutely nothing new. Uh, we didn't have any significant technical developments, and that holds true. So we're going to recap, kind of pick up, uh, you know, for really pretty much anybody where we left off on Friday, including you know those watching, uh, looking coming into the public YouTube channel. Uh, remember, we broke out of here. Uh, this is a daily chart of spy, so we'll do a quick recap. We had these uh, several several uh, failed attempts here at that uh, 191 50 ish level, give or take. Uh, another failed attempt there, and we finally broke out. So what we have is a breakout of that level, and uh, we back tested, and that's where we left off. There Friday we had closed right down on that level, and uh, so far we've held support on that back test. There's one, two, three candles that have all closed either right on or you know within you know hair above hair below that level and again it's just a rough rough number it's not an exact uh you know you can round off a few pennies some of those candles are a little higher some a little lower and so that's it so it's a breakout and a, and a successful back test so far so we're still watching that uh this is the the current consolidation or, or trading range so we're moving sideways um there's you know trading ops for active traders i'll get to that in a second you know some of the you know trade that i shared this morning actually two trades uh on the market itself but again most of the opportunities lie in, in individual sectors individual stocks and everything else and to, oh just to recap once again uh i did this uh was it in Friday's video? And if I didn't do it in Friday's video, if it was yesterday's video, uh, forgive me, is the heavy, heavy economic calendar coming up for this Thursday. So I'm, uh, again, just to reiterate, in case you didn't catch any of the other uh, updates, I don't expect a lot unless missiles start flying in Iran or over in the Persian Gulf or somewhere, something big happens. I don't expect much to, to happen in the market. So I think we'll continue to see these little back and forth, you know, these quick day trading ops like we had today um, with the market kind of grinding sideways until uh, we we have the uh, big, big three or four uh, earnings reports come out on Friday. I went over this in a recent video. Uh, these four right here, uh, that's the two share classes of Alphabet, the GOGL, the Class A, and the other share class. So these four companies alone collectively account for nearly one-fourth of the returns in QQQ. So this is a huge earnings day. This one alone, Amazon, is you know better than 10% uh, weighting in the NASDAQ 100. And these also have a big impact on the S&P 500 as well. So Again, uh, I would expect very little anything, you know, anything, I don't expect anything big to happen in the market until after these guys are out of the way. They report Thursday night. That means you're not going to see the market's reaction to uh, to these stocks until Friday morning at the open. So, uh, and then of course we also have GDP Friday morning at an hour before the market opens. That's a big one. And uh, some other economic reports as I've covered recently this week. So that's the expectation is probably continue to grind around again unless something, you know, big comes out of the blue, some fundamental catalyst uh, and you can't ever, you know, foresee that coming. But we can foresee see the earnings reports that are coming up on Thursday. So let's let's uh, take a look at the um, uh, chart. Well, let me go back to this uh, QQQ before we get to the future. So that's that. Uh, and nothing has changed from the technical picture. That was a point I was trying to impress yesterday that absolutely nothing has changed recently. We had the breakdown here of this uptrend line, little breakdown right there, back test. And uh, since we broke down, back tested, we've been moving sideways so far. So we're holding this breakout. So until and unless that fails, you have to give that check mark to the bulls. Uh, but as I always say, I don't take breakouts that occur with uh, strong and clear negative divergences and overbought conditions because much, much, much more often than not, I'd say 90% plus, those breakouts fail. Uh, so whether I pop a little more or, or not, uh, that is continues to be my expectation. 
option uh, for some downside here. We just need a catalyst. We don't have any sell signals yet. Uh, we need to see, you know, an impulsive move down below. And what would that look like? You know, if we continue to flounder around the rest, uh, you know, for the next few days into Friday, into the end of this week, or maybe until early next week, um, you know, a big red candle down through that level. Uh, the bullish case would have us going up from here and uh, taking out the top of that recent trading range and building on those gains. And, and then from there, we'd still have to take out the divergences to really change anything uh, in the intermediate to longer term technical picture. 60 minute chart. Again, uh, this was covered last week. We had a big old gap right here uh, and some resistance. There's your gap right there. It says gap support, gap S. That's what that is. Uh, a lot of reactions along that level. So this is the 60-minute wedge. It's that same uptrend line on the daily chart that I showed you here. Actually, I had that trend line right there. I have a couple alternative trend lines. But this was the most recent 60-minute trend line that broke. Well, right to the bottom of the gap, right there, backfilled it, came up, backfilled it again. You know, support, like I always say, support is support until and unless broken. So that's what you have here. The market's uh, moving sideways, two successful tests of support, and uh, and we'll probably continue to grind. Whether we pop the top of the range, pop the bottom, that's the other thing I'll add to this, is that whipsaws are likely when you're in this low volatility, low grind, low volume market, especially with the big um, earnings reports coming up on Thursday. So I would take any breakout to the upside of this recent range or to the downside with a grain of salt. Uh, trade it if you want, but that's so far, there's our range we're looking at right there in QQQ. And again, that's a 60 minute chart. So where do you make money? Again, um, besides everything else, you know, commodities, precious metals, treasury bonds, individual stocks, sectors that, that have movement, that have much clearer charts and, and uh, better price action right now. Other than that, you would take a look at uh, you know, potential day trading ops. When you get in these low grind, low volatility uh, modes, you know, if the opportunities present, I don't do this day in and day out. I'm not a day trader by nature. I'm a swing trader, but I wear a lot of hats. I'll day trade all day long. I do, you know, hundreds, many hundreds of day trades per year, uh, along with swing trades uh, when the opportunities are there. And, and with day trading, uh, if you're not familiar, the difference is by definition, you have your trades closed out at the end of the day. So you don't have the overnight risk that you have in swing trading. Um, I'll, I, I kind of hybridize my day trading somewhat, for lack of a better word, because, you know, with the futures, I like to trade futures and they trade virtually around the clock. So I can walk away. I can put a trade that might intended to be, uh, and I'll get to one here in a second, uh, just a short term trade. Maybe I expect it to be closed out by tonight, um, midnight. But, you know, the futures are going to keep trading and I can walk away with an OCO order. That's what I I. I preach the virtues of those many times on the site. OCO is one cancels another. Buy a position, take a position long or short, immediately turn around, set a, you know, if you go long uh, XYZ, let's say that company is called XYZ, you go long and you're going to immediately put a stop loss order good to cancel at your stop price and you're going to put a sell limit order good to cancel at your tar price target and uh, what that means is when one or the other is hit the other will automatically cancel and if you do it good to cancel you don't need to be there so they're great for the part-time investor trader that works a job or doesn't have the time or inclination to be in front of the computer and they're great for anybody else um, because it, it gives that discipline uh, you know, uh, where if you say this is my target and this is my stop, you set that order, set it and forget it. One of the two will be hit and you're not going to second guess that trade. So this morning, uh, for example, uh, since we're in that low volatility mode, I mentioned here that the NQ offered an objective short entry. Uh, so we'll get to the NQ chart here in a second. This is a downtrend channel. I focused on, you know, yesterday's video. I said we have this downtrend now coming off the highs in the NASDAQ 100. And um, we also had uh, this positive divergence right here, 60 minute divergence down at the lows, which was the catalyst for that thrust up. So you have the downtrend line, plus you have this nice clean uh, minor uptrend line right there. And so therefore, you know, that's where I put on a short. I said it's objective short for a quick pullback trade, or you can, you know, swing trade if you want. You have resistance just above 7970. You can set a stop a little bit above that. You don't want to put it right on there. You, you need to allow for stop pops as part of this market, especially the low volume.
about. And so that was, what was that, 8.43, a little before the market opened. And the market opened, and you can see what happened down here. These are the zoom-ins on these two-minute charts. You can see ES and NQ, oops, wrong, wrong tool, uh, just plunged right at the open. And that took us down. So we had A, number one, we had a, an impulsive rejection off the downtrend line. And then B, it took us down through the, uh, gave us a next sell trigger, which I said would be a break of the minor uptrend line there. And then follow up uh, was that same, you know, all on all these charts, the first, you know, support level I had 79.20 and uh, that was hit there. So what I did, as I mentioned, you know, good time to take profits, especially for a day trade, you know, quick, you know, that's about $900 per e each NQ contract right there on a quick move and what, less than an hour or so. And, uh, you know, I reversed that to a long at that point. And uh, so now let's go to where we're at here. Oh, and then long, like I said, on the, on the comment section, I then trailed the stops up and I didn't milk the whole run all the way up to the top. We're going to get to these charts, but I, you know, it was a nice, you know, added on, enhance the profits. And if you guys aren't familiar with, I say reverse a trade, um, not all brokers allow this. Interactive Brokers has a great feature. When you are long or short a stock, uh, let's say you go long 100 shares of XYZ, and you want to, uh, you have a good, to, you know, good idea that when it hits your pri price target, your profit target, that's a key level, and you're expecting the stock to reverse from there and go the other way. That's what I call reverse trades. So I will put an order. Uh, to uh, let's say you know pick a round number that had 100 shares I can put an order to sell that 100 shares at my price target let's say $50 and turn around at the same time and sell another 100 shares to go short and the way you do that with interactive brokers instead of creating two orders one to close out your long position and another to short 100 shares for a new short position you simply enter an order to sell 200 shares when it hits that price and interactive brokers is smart enough to figure out that you were long 100 you when it hit this level you sold 200 which closed out your long position and effectively gave you a short position of another hundred and the nice thing is a bundle that's one commission that's one trade not two separate trades uh, so now you can if you don't have that feature with your broker and you call them and ask them if you don't um, again it's only with active traders so you're not an active trader you're probably not reversing trades like I do but um, to do that is uh, or what I'm trying to say, if you do that, then you're going to have to, of course, on the new trade, go in and then uh, set your set your uh, new trade parameters, your stop and your price target on that new trade. Or in this case, you know, a lot of times I'll go like this, just, you know, trail up a stop and let it run for a, a trade into the rest of the day. So that was that was then. And uh, that was, you know, again, about, you know, before 1030. So a little, you know, less than an hour after the market had opened. And uh, let's grab uh, the updated chart on NQ for you and take a look and see where we might go from here. So now we've popped, we popped the downtrend line right there. Uh, this has happened since the market closed. We closed right about on it, and there's that 79, 70, 50 ish level. Remember, NQ trades in quarter point increments. Uh, this charting platform, for whatever reason, it does, doesn't pop and snap to the nearest quarter point. But So that's 79, 70, uh, yeah, 79, 750. And we popped above there, but you know what? There is a reaction high. And as I said before, there's also. Um, uh, a lot of uh, whipsaw signals to be expected this week, so I wouldn't I wouldn't put a whole lot into this. However, at this point in time, um, like I, I I said on the site before, I I stepped aside after you know trailing up a stop, getting stopped out for a profit on that other trade, and I stepped aside and didn't have any intention to reengage uh, QQQ or NQ today. Uh, although it's looking a little bit interesting here, especially if this breakout fails because we're at resistance. So I'm going to watch that. And I'm just thinking to myself right now as I'm doing this video whether I want to uh, take a position home, uh, go home with a short position tonight, uh, set a stop somewhere a little bit. I wouldn't give it a lot of room over that, that level, that previous reaction high there, about 79.82, about right where we are now. And uh, and then uh, try to swing it down for another move back down here to the uh, today's lows or that 79.20 level, quite possibly more. But again, uh, I'm just thinking to myself out loud here, guys. Until until we get those big earnings reports, expect more of this. Oh, the other thing that I mentioned too the other day is 
you know, we are in a downtrend. This was our downtrend line right now. Uh, we're still below the previous high. And so that's the near term trend, a very near term. That's not to be confused with the, you know, intermediate or longer term trends, which are bullish. But the near term trend remains down until unless we pop this high, because a downtrend simply defined as a security making a series of lower highs and lower lows. Uh, so let's, let's take a look at ES real quick, see what we have there. Uh, here's ES. This is the similar downtrend line. We were at that, when I posted that first uh, setup this morning, we were at the uh, downtrend line also in ES as well, and we had this minor uptrend line there. I've since added, you can see, I've, I'll zoom in a little bit, an alternative trend line right here. I have this trend line is the one I just added. It comes off the highs right there. The highs are on July 15th. You come in, you capture several candles here, you capture this high, and now right where we're at now. So again, this is the one I had earlier that just got popped uh, and right after the market closed today. But we also have a, a confluence of resistance up here on SPY. Your ES and these are micro levels. This might be boring you to tears right now if you're a swing trader. I'm just showing you very short term tr levels that are good for very, you know, short term trades. But uh, when you day trade, the other thing to that is um, where you might normally take, let's say, whatever your number is. Maybe you take on swing trading $50,000 positions for a swing trade that might last for weeks or months, uh, or you take 5,000, it doesn't matter. When you day trade, you will take a multiple of that because you don't have the overnight risk. You don't have the risk of earnings gaps against you or news-induced gaps. Or when you're trading during market hours, um, you can control your stops a lot tighter, especially on individual stocks and ETFs because you don't have the round-the-clock trading like futures. Uh, so therefore, and that's, you know, futures by nature leverage up. So, you know, when you're trying to, if you're only swinging a half a percent or so uh, move uh, on the futures, then you're still putting several hundred dollars in your pocket. And even a quarter point move is going to put several hundred dollars in your pocket. So, uh, and I'm talking in percentage terms. And so that, that's basically it. Uh, you know, I'm just trying to fill time on this video with some interesting things to comment on because the market is anything but interesting. Here's the SPY 60 minute chart. And really this, I guess this all, this is your recent trading range, sideways trading range. After the breakdown, we've gone nowhere. Um, and uh, you can see the levels. So, uh, you know, look for a, uh, an impulsive break above or below this range. But again, probably best to wait until this week is over, at least, uh, you know, until so, we see how things start shaping up on Friday after those big companies report, plus the GDP report. Uh, a couple other things, and we'll wrap the video up. ES, oh, we already covered ES. I wanted to show our, share RTY. I posted this chart on the site today. These are the uh, NASDAQ, I'm sorry, not the NASDAQ. These are the Russell 2000 small cap futures. So I'm going to move that line up there to capture all those. Tighten my trend line up a little bit. Just trying to capture all the recent highs. There we go. Right about there. So what you can see here, it's a simple, you know, wash, rinse, repeat thing. Small caps appear to be poised to play a game uh, of catch up to the large caps if they can break out. So what we have here, what I'm looking at is this uh, wedge pattern here. You have a downtrend line and a divergence line down below that forms a wedge. Uh, and it's a, a simple wash, rinse, repeat thing. You can see down here, see all the divergence lines are drawn down below on the indicators. So when you have prices making lower lows, here's your positive or bullish divergence that led to that rally. There's a divergent high that led to that correction. There's a divergent low that led to that rally. There's a divergent high and that led to this correction so far. And now we've come full circle. We have a divergent low. However, divergent highs, I always say this, are not in themselves or divergent lows. They're not buy or sell signals. They're merely an indication that a trend reversal is likely. I didn't have that trend line there. There's a steep trend line. So your buy and sell signals come um, on a break of the trend lines and that's uh, that's what you're waiting for here so this one looks poised to pop and maybe it does so hard to imagine it going too far before uh, you know uh, the end of this week we, again with the markets kind of in a holding pattern but uh, I'll, I'll say this the IWM or the small cap this is the e futures RTY uh, same as IWM ETF if you will uh, have been building energy coiling they've been trading locked in a sideways range for quite a while building up energy uh, so as you can see they fall into support about 1544 pretty decent support 
Uh, if that breaks, um, then we can easily go down here. We could burn through the divergence. Um, but I wanted to point this pattern out because if it pops to the upside, uh, that could certainly be the catalyst. I'm going to give you a midpoint here. It's a minor resistance here. Uh, if you want to trade small cap futures, there may be a trade here. And um, yeah, we'll probably come all the way back up to the, you know, have a little hiccup here around 1565 and then maybe move all the way up here to about that 1581 top of the channel again if that breaks out. So we'll keep an eye on the small caps and uh, let's look at IWM real quick. Okay, for those of you that don't trade futures, here's IWM, this is a 60-minute chart. Same story, look for these divergent highs, divergent high, correction, divergent low, rally. Um, don't see a divergent high here on the 60. Well, we had a divergent high right there. Oh, yeah, that's that was our divergent high. We broke down and we back tested. There was our uptrend line right there, back tested. And we've been moving sideways uh, pretty much since right there. And remember, this was this 156. Uh, 56 was when we were back here. That was my, my max upside swing target, which was hit right here before we even broke out of this wedge. I had identified that bullish falling wedge and the uh, uh, divergent low in advance at the time. And so that's what we're looking at now is smaller, much smaller wedge. So it wouldn't project, to, you know, uh, for the same amount of gains that this one projected to uh, typically. And it's just a rough measurement. You take the widest part of the wedge, add that to where the wedge breaks out. And so that's why I'm looking for a possible move back up here to that 156.56 level again if we break out. So for you IWM traders, uh, here's one to watch tomorrow or sometime this week. And uh, like anything breaks out we, we're probably going to see we have a chance to see increased whipsaw signals I mean false breakouts so if you take it you just don't fall in love you you know take the breakout if it looks good ideally you want to see it on above average volume an impulsive breakout or a gap above and then you decide where to put your stops you may want to allow for at least a back test um, but you don't want to fall in love with it if the breakout fails like I always say fewer things in investing or trading are more bearish than a failed long side breakout. So if that happens, I would expect a pretty swift move down. If the breakout fails and then we undercut the lows, probably come on down here to that 158.80 level. Uh, so let's let's wrap it up here. Again, that's uh, about all I can see right now for the markets. We'll we'll turn back to the daily and the weekly charts when we get some movement here. But with these small little daily price swings that we've had lately. Uh, nothing has changed recently on the longer term charts uh, worth pointing out. All right, we'll wrap it up here. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoyed it.